Hi Shredded Society, my name is Jacob and I am here today to present Rowdyfy. So here we go. Um, a common scenario when you're working on a website is you need to update the contents of a route. And in order to do so, you need to figure out where you left your file. Um, often it could be anywhere. And this is something that happens a lot when your file structure is something you add as an afterthought rather than have it be the foundation of what you're making. Um, then you have the interdependencies of a traditional router. Um, if you need to update one part, you often need to update several parts of your, um, your whole system. Um, it's not too much of a hassle as long as you remember to update everything but every now and then you forget something and then you have dead links on your website or in your app and yes who wants that um, so why a file router um, you get the predictability you have when you have conventions um, for instance you have a one-to-one -one map between routes and files that helps you locate any file you might be looking for and then you have the single source of truth um, wherever your file is and whatever it's called in your file structure that's the truth there's no configuration that says one thing no navigation that says a second thing and no file structure says a third thing it's all in the file structure and as you can see here um, what you see is pretty much what you get. Um, then we have layouts. Um, if you're familiar with Sapper, these work the same way. Um, any file inherits the layouts in its folder and in its parent folders. That means index inherits uh, its sibling layout and its parent layouts. So in this case, it will have both a left navigation and a top navigation. Um, here's an example of a nested layout where you have the layout up here and the content down here uh, in the slot. Then we have resets. Um, these are useful if you say you're making a multi-tenant app where your tenants can make a shop but your tenants don't want your layout to be part of their layout. Um, so what they can do is, or you can do, is you can insert a reset like we have here. And what that does is it clears everything outside the folder. So the layout chain you had before is gone. And this is all that's in the app now. This is gone. Um, an example of this is this presentation. Um, this presentation is in a reset itself and that's why you can't see the navigation of our website where it's located. Then we have fallbacks and they're very straightforward. Um, they handle 404s or they can handle uh, custom logic if you have uh, a folder where you think this is not a task for a file router you could create a fallback in that folder and just have everything redirect to that file and then from there have that file control all the logic in that folder and then we have our URL helper um, let's see here just to get me up to speed um, unlike a normal browser where your relative URL is relative to the current path in the address bar. Our links here are relative to the file that's that the loc or the URL is located in. This have a, has a lot of advantages, especially that if you're navigating around your site, your nav bar will keep uh, static links rather than keep them relative to the current address, which wouldn't work in a nav bar and then we have the named route down here 
which is also very helpful. You can assign a name to a file and once you do that, you can um, link to it from anywhere by using that name. And it doesn't matter if you move the file around, you'll always find it with that name. And we'll get into that in a bit. Next we have um, automatic links. These are not so much a feature of Routify, but more something you can do with Routify. Um, as you can see here, we're walking through the layout to children and creating links from those children. Um, it's very straightforward. And just to show you an example, um, and sorry about the spoilers here, this is the same concept applied to all the files in our presentation folder, which you can see here. So that's how that works. Then we have metadata and metadata is basically data that can be accessed with outside the file um, without having to load it first. Um, this allows indexing files, ordering them, um, linking to them without having to load them and waste bandwidth on something you might not want to load. Um, just as an example here, we have the index set to four. That is the same as what we have here with the different numbers, 45, 50, 60. Um, that's what keeps everything in order. Um, let's see, what else do we have? All right. Um, here we have uh, custom preloading. As you can see, we have a custom prop here on our metadata. And that allows us to iterate through our routes and then load the routes that have the preload me prop set on them. Um, and of course, we also want to load the layouts. So here we have another um, custom metadata. And as you can see here, we have a custom prop called block post. And inside it, we have a prop called published. Um, what we can do then is we can um, list all the files in a folder as we're doing here and then we filter out um, any metadata that has the blog post prop and then we sort them by using the published prop and you can see that on our website by going to the block address and then the question is do you have to use metadata and no not at all um, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't make sense, and it's something you'll probably know when you get there, if it's something you need. Then we have uh, query strings. These are very straightforward. Um, you have the parameters here, and they are applied to your path, which you can then see down here. And What we can do then is we can overload our parameters here and still get the data as you can see here what we do then uh, is we get query strings and here we overload overload it even further and in order to then later access these parameters we can use the params helper that we've got here and that would then get us the whole string Then we have our uh, meta tax helpers. Um, they are something we use primarily for automation, um, but they can also be set manually. Um, along with setting the meta, to meta tax title, they also set the OG title for Open Graph. And on top of that, there are a few templates and stuff that you can use with them or set up your own templates for your own custom logic. Then we have decorators. Um, a decorator is just a component that gets wrapped around every file in a tree uh, descending from a slot. So what happens is if we um, if we apply a decorator to this slot, which is in this layout here, every descendant will then be wrapped in that decorator all the way down, and this is actually what we've done here. Um, we've applied a, a decorator, 
at the root level and that decorator is then uh, wrapped around every single component in the whole tree which is what um, allows these transitions to take place. Um, exporting a uh, static site with Routify is very straightforward. Um, you can use it as a plain static site or you can use it with uh, spa hydration or you can use it with SSR or you can combine it any way you want. Um, so there's complete freedom when you export um, your Routify, Routify app. Um, then we have SSR. Um, SSR is not something Routify does but it's Routify friendly in the way that it works in JS DOM, Puppeteer and our own server here called Spasser um, which is what we actually use um, for, develop for development um, and I'll get into SSR a bit later as well then we have type safety uh, and auto completion we're still lacking a few guides on how to set this up in your IDE but drop by our discord and we'll try help you set this up if this is something you need uh, then we have our starter template and it's very easy to get started with um, you pretty much just write Routify in it and then you have a project going. Um, when you do that, you get a dev server that serves on port 5000 and 5005 with SPA and SSR respectively. Um, to see the difference, I'm just gonna show you this site we're looking at here, or this page, what it looks like in the SPA. Um, this is port 5000 and to show that on port 5005, we'll go here. And that's the difference between the two. Let's see if there's something we're missing here. You could also use this server for production, but I'm not sure if there's much need in nine out of 10 cases where you could just easily deploy it to now or Netlify. Then we have a dynamic imports and yeah. That is very straightforward. Um, you have the same control in the starter template as you do in Routify. So something you can look at in the documentation or drop by Discord for a bit of information on. Um, in order to deploy um, the starter template, template to now or Netlify, you simply just run npm run deploy now. And what you get then is a little interactive CLI asking you a couple of questions where you just click enter twice I think and that's it it's all it's just select, selecting the defaults and then you have a website with SSR dynamic imports and pre-rendering another option is using um, Netlify's github integration as you'll see here It's going a bit fast, but you get the idea. You click a few buttons and then you type in uh, your base directory and run build command, and then that's it. Pre rendering we've covered, um, it's included in the starter template, and it does help with that extra speed um, on pages that you don't need to re render again with the SSR. And in order to get SSR working, um, there's one thing you have to do, and it's fairly simple. If you look at this example here, we have a uh, async function that fetches some data from a JSON placeholder. In a SPA, that would show, but in an SSR, that would not be um, served from the server. It would be something that would be hydrated in the app on the client, and sometimes that's not what we want. So if you wanted to uh, hydrate the server, um, especially for SEO purposes, we could do this. The little ready helper here delays the render of our SSR function. Um, 
normally SSR would render the whole website instantly, but once you uh, once you include a ready helper, it doesn't render anything until that ready helper is called. Um, if Routify is not for you, there are a few alternatives. Uh, actually, there's a lot of alternatives. If you're looking for a file router, there's SAPA, which is also a great framework if you're looking for data handling. Um, and if you don't want a file router, if you prefer um, traditional routers, there's a lot of routers, and I wouldn't even know where to start with which one I'd recommend. And if that doesn't work for you either, you can always roll your own, which is kind of how this started. And that was it. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again.